Today I will be talking about deep geological repositories for nuclear waste and the simulations we have done using our finite element method called TEBAS. As humanity, we are now facing big challenges. We need to rapidly reduce our CO2 emissions and create more sustainable way of living. From this perspective, nuclear energy seems to be extremely interesting. Even though construction of the plant is costly, both in terms of CO2 emissions and money, its operation is sustainable with almost zero carbon footprint and with fuel being plentiful. However, there is a problem to solve related to the nuclear waste produced by the power plants. According to the Finnish Nuclear Energy Act, all nuclear waste must be treated, stored and disposed of within the Finnish borders and no nuclear waste from other countries shall be imported into Finland. The amount of highly active waste created by the power plants is not that large, yet it needs to be safely stored for a very long time. The nuclear waste repository in Finland is constructed in Olkiluoto, nearby the nuclear power plant. The waste will be stored there in a system of tunnels a bit more than 400 meters below the surface. In the corridors underground, vertical disposal corridors are drilled in which the copper canisters containing the radioactive waste will be positioned. The canisters with the waste will be insulated from the rock by highly compacted bentonite, while the tunnels will be ultimately filled with bentonite backfill. Therefore, we have several barriers preventing the release of radioactive elements into the environment. The most important are the copper canister, bentonite buffer and the 400-500 meters of bedrock. The copper canister safety is still being assessed, but it seems that risk scenarios exist in which they corrode or crack. Therefore, the canister perhaps will not prevent the leakage for a very long time. Also, it is established that there are various types of structures in the rock at the site some of them water conductive. As such, the final disposal tunnels and the disposal holes for the canisters will be positioned inside the bedrock in such a manner that any major water conducting structures will be avoided. Yet, it does not seem to me that the bedrock is a barrier which will, by itself, prevent the transport of the radionuclides. That leaves the bentonite as perhaps the most important barrier for the storage safety. This barrier needs to remain operational for a very long period of time as the waste needs one million years for its radioactivity to become the same as environment. In the first thousand of years, the radioactivity is reduced up to 100 times when compared to the time of disposal. This is further reduced in the next few thousand of years and later, the remaining isotopes will have longer lifespan, remaining active for a much longer time. As the bentonite barrier has to be impermeable for a very long time and is the guarantee of the repository safety, how does it work? Bentonite is a very fine clay built from clay platelets being nanometers thick. Between the platelets, few layers of water molecules can enter. When put into the storage, the bentonite is dry with almost no water between the clay minerals. Yet, during relatively short period of time, the majority of bentonite will become saturated with water coming from the rock. The water coming from the rock contains many chemicals affecting both the bentonite behavior and the copper canister. Bentonite is also heated by the canister with heat affecting its properties and slowing down the saturation process. When the water enters the clay interparticle spaces, it leads to a swelling of clay particles. As the bentonite is tightly packed in the tunnel, the swelling is prevented, leading to a significant pressure buildup. This pressure helps to seal any cracks, but also, if too high, may negatively affect the copper canisters. Bentonite is also extremely impermeable material, both in dry and saturated state, due to very small pores. The pore structure of saturated bentonite is becoming even finer, leading to very low permeability. In my research group, we have created a finite element method called TEBES, 
taking into account all these influences and we use the code to numerically replicate small scale and large scale experiments. For example, here you can see the simulation of bentonite placed in a steel tube which is hydrated from outside and heated from inside over several years. The initially dry bentonite gets wetted, see how the relative humidity involves, and the swelling pressure develops. The Tebes codes we use in this simulation is created by us from scratch, and we have control over all the constitutive laws and models used, as well as algorithms, helping us to avoid any numerical problems in calculations. The code can be also used for other problems with thermal and chemical couplings, such as, such as those related to geothermal energy and have a promising carbon neutral way of extracting or storing the energy. I believe that this research is very important for our sustainable future. I would like to continue it and make sure that the nuclear waste repositories are safe for the years to come. I think that such research must be done with much care and much scrutiny. I aim to provide honest, unbiased research which gives an accurate answers as possible. I also want my research to be helpful in building a better future for us all. I hope you are interested in the research and if you would like to help or just ask for more information, please don't hesitate to contact me at ALT. And for now, thank you for listening.